welcome. This is the first introduction lecture here. And the first part will be just a short introduction about mathematics, genes, and genomes. I will go through some basic concepts, start with evolution, and then the building blocks of life, and then genomes and sequencing, and ending up with what is mathematics. This will be divided into several chapters, and you can look at them one by one by following the links on the web page. A fundamental aspect of all biology is the famous quote or essay by Theodosius Tomschalski in 1973 that said, nothing in biology makes sense except in light of evolution. It's very hard to understand biology if you don't take any evolution into account. Because everything is not always optimized the way it is, but it has a history. And by studying this history, you can understand much better how things work today. So for instance, we know today that there are three kingdoms of life. There are bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes. And how these things, how this relates to a common ancestor about a billion years ago is one of the main questions that people have been struggling on to figure out for the last 40 years. And within the, each kingdom of life, there are many small, small groups. So that we have a very small group of animals called, that we belong to. And by looking at the map below, you can see that actually what is the closest uh, group to animals? It's the fungi, etc. So by a number of evolutionary riddles that have been studied or at least partly solved by large cells that are sequencing and mathematics are, where do we come from? The human origin and how evolution. How did we migrate through the world? How are we, how are we related to earlier forms of human needs? Are they, what were the Neanderthals living? How were, what were like like? What color of the hair did they have? Uh, we also know that uh, where did the great panda come from? It's an important question. And how does viruses relate to other forms of life, etc.? So, and how can we know what influenza virus will hit us this year? This is all by studying sequences and evolution. So one typical example is actually the riddle of the giant pandas. We all know how the giant pandas looks like. It's one of the most famous animals in the world. It's, uh, but for the last hundred years or so, people were not able to figure out how it, what, how it was related to other animals. Is it a bear or is it a... Uh, raccoon or tvet, bjorn in Swedish. Uh, they look like bears, but they are black and white, but okay. Uh, they, but they have one thing that is typical for raccoons, but not for bears, is that they do not hibernate. So it was not clear how they were related to the pandas and um, or raccoons. So in 1985, Stephen O'Brien and colleagues try to analyze this by uh, studying the DNA sequences of pandas, raccoons, and bears, and made what is called a phylogenetic tree to study the relationship and end up with this model. So they found that, for instance, brown bears and polar bears are very related to each other. They are basically the same species. When brown bears and grizzly bears are the same thing. Then there are smaller black bears that are a bit more further related. So there is a spectacle bear that actually looks a bit like a panda, that also clearly are bears. And then, clearly within the bear group, the giant panda is, but it's a distant relative to all other bears. It's probably evolved something like 20 million years ago from the rest of the, of the uh, bears. And on the other hand, the raccoons, and also the red panda, which is a raccoon, but it just happens to be called, be called red panda because it eats uh, bamboo, are also related to bears, but they are certainly a subgroup that evolved something like 35 million years ago. So how to make these trees and how to use DNA sequencing for studying these kind of relationships is something you will learn in this course. And you will also study other, try to understand the relationship between all other animals like humans and chimpanzees and primates and uh, uh, fishes or rats and raccoons, etc, etc. And this is going back to the old studies of Linnaeus where you try to classify uh, the biological kingdoms into subgroups. 